we are going to study all these topics here today so let's just see what happens exactly when your molecule absorbs higher radiations the molecule starts to dance yes this is what is happening see how it is dancing right so this is nothing but molecular vibrations ir radiations changes uh, causes changes in the molecular vibrations by absorbing ir radiation molecule starts to vibrate and this causes the atom uh, to fluctuate continuously it is not stationary and there are the vibrations that are taking place are of two types one is stretching and one is bending vibrations stretching is like imagine you are stretching a rubber so you are increasing or decreasing the length same thing happens in stretching vibrations the bond length changes and in bending uh, the bond angle changes depending upon the types of stretching we have symmetric and asymmetric stretch symmetric means what similar same so both the bonds are increasing or decreasing at the same time okay and asymmetric means what one bond length increases and one bond length decreases this is what happens in stretching when the molecule absorbs radiation similarly bending results in change in bond angle now there are four types of bending vibrations two are in plane and two are out plane bending okay so rocking and scissoring imagine you are holding a scissor and cutting something so that motion of the scissor is nothing but a scissoring scissoring vibration okay rocking imagine yourself sitting on a rocking chair the way you rock that is your rocking vibration now both scissoring and uh, rocking are your in plane vibrations so they are in same plane okay and wagging and twisting are out plane vibrations that means uh in wagging uh, both the bonds are coming towards you or they are going away from you outside the plane uh, like above the plane and below the plane and in twisting one bond is coming above the plane other is going below the plane this is called as twisting okay then what is this ir spectroscopy what exactly we are going to study here it is when a uh, molecule absorbs ir radiation vibrations take place and this spectroscopic method is useful in determining the functional group of the molecule so different groups different functional group absorb ir radiations of different frequency and through that we can come to know which functional group is present okay and if you look at compare these two spectras over here the first one is the uv spectra you can see how broad the peak is and these are the peaks of ir okay they are very sharp so a molecule gives very sharp peaks the absorption peaks sorry are the absorption peaks are very sharp compared to uv and visible region each molecule has a characteristic spectrum that means uh, two spectras will never match unless and until the molecule is same okay <coughs> every molecule has a unique spectra and that is that for ir is also called as fingerprint of the molecule just like we have a fingerprint okay which is unique and uh we can identify the molecule we can identify the group by comparing its absorption peak to the data bank of the spectrum so data bank could be the different values of the functional groups it could be the ir spectra of the uh, uh, previously taken molecule so you'll see that what exactly we are going to compare here applications just like other spectroscopic techniques we can use this for structural determination for uh, structural determination we can use it for both organic inorganic we can use it for studying the course of reaction whether the reaction is complete or not purity of the sample okay and most importantly functional group now you can look at uh, you can see the different regions going from uh, uh, uh lower energy to higher energy ir radiations are having lower energy than uv radiations and therefore they cannot uh, cause uh, uh, changes that are given by uv uv causes electronic transitions and ir therefore causes vibrational uh, transitions my molecule just vibrates at its place okay the bonds vibrate in ir there are three regions near uh, mid ir and far ir and the region that we generally use for studying is this mid ir region which uh, is from 400 cm inverse to 4000 cm inverse and uh, 
here the the measurements are taken play, take uh, the uh, are taken as wave number so the wavelength is expressed in terms of wave number so whatever centimeter inverse that we are looking over here is nothing but the wave number okay far ir region is from 0 to 400 which is closer to microwave and the near ir is this 4000 to 1 uh, it's 12500 okay then which molecules will absorb IR radiations? Okay, it's, it's not like that all molecules will give you IR spectra. So, the molecules which will result in dipole moment change during the vibration are IR active. So, according to selection rule, vibrations are only IR active or they will absorb, they will show the absorption spectra, they will absorb IR radiations if the molecule, uh, molecular dipole moment changes during the vibration so after absorbing the ir radiation uh, the vibrations take place and if the vibrations are causing any change in the dipole moment we say that they are ir active okay let's let's understand with the help of examples four examples i've given over here let's start with the middle one if you look at these two molecules these are quite symmetrical okay this is a homo uh, atomic molecule okay a diatomic molecule two atoms are same and this is a polyatomic molecule different molecules uh, different atoms are there but both what is common in both both are symmetrical so if both are symmetrical there is no dipole moment now if there is no dipole moment no absorption it's ir inactive here it is unsymmetrical so there is no question of uh, uh, not absorbing because it will always have a permanent dipole moment and it will be ir active now, if you look at this, even though it is polyatomic, it's diatomic with different uh, atoms in it, it has no dipole moment because both the, it's linear and, you know, it's like um, same side pulled with the same side. So, CO2 has no dipole moment, but the dipole moment can be induced due to a symmetric or anti-symmetric displacement and that is why it becomes IR active. So, what are the conditions? If it's a homopolar diatomic molecule like N2Cl2 H2, which do not have any dipole moment, they are IR inactive, they don't absorb IR radiation. If molecules have different atoms, but even if dipole moment is not present at the beginning, but it can be induced due to anti-symmetric displacement of the center of the charge, then it can absorb IR radiation. We'll see how this displacement takes place. And if the molecule is already unsymmetrical, then dipole moment is already present and you get very good absorption bands. So only those vibrations which result in unsymmetrical charge distribution cause absorption of radiation. These vibrations should result in temporary change in dipole moment. It's not necessary that the molecule should have a permanent dipole moment. There must be a temporary change of dipole moment. So the, these are your selection rules. Okay. Now coming to the number of vibrations and one example of CO2 that I just spoke about. The number of vibrations are given by these formulas. For linear it is 3n minus 5 and for non-linear it is 3n minus 6. Like for example H2O which is a non-linear molecule. So applying this formula you get the answer as 3 indicating that it has 3 vibrations or 3 degrees of freedom. CO2 is a linear molecule. Now if it is a linear molecule when you apply this formula this is the answer that you get 4. So if it has 4 it should have 4 modes of vibration. But if you look at the values in the IR spectra, you are getting only two peaks. One is at 2350 and one is at 666. So what's the reason for that? So out of the four, only two are seen. The reason is the first one, if you look at this, it is a symmetric stretch. A symmetric stretch. Okay. So if it's a symmetric stretch, it has no dipole change and therefore it is inactive. So this will not show any absorption band. Asymmetric stretch, this is what I was talking about, anti-symmetric stretch which causes, uh, in, which induces dipole moment and then this becomes IR active. These two vibrations, they are degenerate, that means they are having same energy. Because they are having same energy, they will show you only one band, right? That is why we get only two peaks in the IR. So CO2, initially there was no dipole moment, but it was induced because of anti-symmetric stretch and hence it becomes IR active. Okay. 
and this is what is degrees of freedom if you have n number of atoms there are total 3m degrees of freedom giving you different translation and rotational vibrations okay now ir spectroscopy as we studied is based on vibrational excitation of molecule now this is example of h2o molecule if you look at the frequencies when you when different frequencies are absorbed look at the change in the vibration so a same molecule can absorb different frequencies and it can show different vibrations at the same time okay so energy of infrared is not enough as i told you it is not enough to cause electronic excitation only it causes vibrational excitation different vibrate vibrations take place at different frequency it could be stretching or bending vibration and it depends upon the masses of the two atoms and the bond distance if the frequency of the vibration each vibration each molecule will vibrate at a certain frequency so if the frequency of the vibration matches with that of the ir radiation then absorption takes place it's just like tuning a radio when you tune it to the proper frequency you can hear the song it's exactly like that okay each of these vibration vibrational transition causes absorption band this is how it looks like when molecule comes down to ground state it gives out energy is given out as heat y axis is percentage transmittance x axis is a wave number okay so wave number frequency energy decreases from left to right wherever a peak occurs it is reported as reciprocal of centimeter or wave number it is centimeter inverse each peak indicates characteristic functional group this is what a typical ir spectrum looks like and we can divide it into four region single bond region triple bond double bond fingerprint region single bond region is from 2500 to 4000 showing all the single bonds oh nh ch the triple bond obviously c triple bond and c triple bond c from 2000 to 2500 double bond region will have c double bond c c double bond o c double bond n and the fingerprint region is a unique region uh, stretching from 600 to 1500 cm inverse and uh, we cannot easily diagnose which bands are this but it's a very important region in the ir spectroscopy so fingerprint region is exactly like our fingerprint so my fingerprint will never match with anyone else similarly our fingerprints are unique nobody's fingerprint matches with other person so each one of us are unique similarly the molecules are unique because the ir uh, spectrum of one molecule will never match with another molecule so two different molecules will never have same ir spectrum hence ir spectrum is known as fingerprint of the molecule it's exactly like our fingerprint okay region as i told you 600 to 1400 1500 that's fine and uh, it contains large number of bands you can see there are large number of bands over here and it is really complex to interpret each band easily what we do is if two ir spectra match at the fingerprint region that means these two molecule these two spectra are of the same molecule this is how we identify the molecule also okay so fingerprint region has a characteristic shape for a particular molecule and hence it is used to establish identity of two samples if known and unknown compound fingerprint region matches or coincide with each other then we can easily say yes that these two spectra are same and they are of same molecule okay that's the beauty of fingerprint region Let's take an example of formaldehyde. Formaldehyde is H C H uh, O, right? C double bond O is a functional group. C H is the other bond. C O stretching. Uh, now each functional group has a certain values that we're going to study. So C O values are generally uh, observed from 1690 to 1750, 1720 20, somewhere around there. So you can see a six C O band over here, okay? And there is one more at 1400, that is for C H. okay this value is not same for all the molecules like you will say that for all the molecules having co i should get only 1700 no 
the values of these uh, peaks depend upon the environment what exactly it is attached to which functional group how rigid what is the stereochemistry which functional group which other group is attached to this functional group so there are a lot of factors okay higher value uh, indicates large dipole change okay and the fingerprint region as i told you it is over here and it has own characteristic fingerprint if you match it's great if it doesn't match that means it is a different molecule so some important ir values i have written over here uh, most of the time we need these values for interpretation of spectra or solving numericals on spectroscopic so you will have to literally learn these values fingerprint region values are not generally uh, useful because uh, it's a complex region and difficult to interpret however uh, we can identify certain substitution on benzene ring ortho meta para we can find that okay then these are all the values and using these values we can find out the structure for example let's take one example let's take the first one you can see there is a peak at 1705 so once you know that there is a peak at 1705 you will look at the chart find out where is 1705 okay this is a strong sharp peak and it is for co so what is our conclusion that this peak is of co similarly there is a peak at around somewhere around 3000 so let's see where what is there at 3000 so at 3000 over here uh where is 3000 okay 3000 is over here in this range so what is it oh that means this has c double bond o oh functional group okay carboxylic acid oh is having a peak at around 2500 to 3500 and alcoholic oh can have a peak at around 3400 to 600 that is a very broad peak actually okay so this is how uh, we interpret the structure uh, other spectroscopic techniques are also used to determine the structure if we are uh, identifying structure of a new molecule and if it is a known molecule then we just compare it with the database in the library of the ir spectras and and we just match the spectras with the two match the fingerprint region and we get our structure if it's in research we have to uh, take help of other spectroscopic techniques and then we identify the structure so that is what we are going to do in the next videos where we are going to solve numericals on spectroscopy thank you